If you need unlimited domination, clutch time, or anything else online or offline grind, and make sure you hit up Rose NBA on Twitter for quick, safe, and reliable grinding services. Yo, what is good, YouTube, and welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we're doing a tier list of the best shooting guards in NBA 2K23, my team. And before we hop into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help me push towards the 8,000 subscriber mark on the channel. I upload every single day and would really appreciate it if you do subscribe. Without further ado, let's hop right into it. We're going to try to do this tier list relatively quickly, just like we did the point guard tier list. I'm trying that out for this one. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the way that I'm doing this tier list. Not going quite as in-depth with each card. Make the video a a little bit quicker uh, and also let me know who your favorite shooting guards in the game are in the comment section as well would love to hear what type of cards y'all are enjoying running at your shooting guard position right now but without further ado let's hop right into it let's check out ben matherin so ben matherin really really good shooter one of the best shooters in the game being an evo card you can't add any badges to him and his overall badges i wouldn't say are crazy elite but he's a decent playmaker with an elite release and somewhat capable defense not a bad card by any means i wouldn't say he's elite at the shooting guard position but he's definitely not bad an elite elite release i will say that but i think he slots in probably low A, high B for Ben Matherin. May move him up to A at some point, potentially, but I don't think so right now. Uh, Shaden Sharp, I mean, C tier even might be a little bit generous for this card. He's just got, well, I'll pull up 2K DB for some cards, and I just want to take a look at Shaden as a diamond. His release is not good. He's got great speed, but he's a very poor defender with very mediocre defensive badges, and he's a questionable shooter with a mediocre release. He's, I mean, he, you could, I'm actually going to put him D tier for now, because really bad release, really bad defender, good slasher, but I don't think he moves that great. His dribble stakes aren't incredible. Like, he's really mediocre. Not a card I really particularly recommend. Alex English is quite solid. 63 pointer, but he's a very solid all around defender. He's got good size and he's a very good slasher with a very good release. The three point rating is low, but you can knock it down wide open and he's a really solid card regardless. Iggy, pretty easy S tier for me. Elite defender, one of the best defensive cards in the game, period. Can guard on the interior. Has an elite player build for a shooting guard. Elite slasher as well. Capable dribble six and knocks down the three at a high level. Wouldn't say his release is elite, but it's not bad. There are some shooting guards with some pretty poor releases and I think Iggy's is somewhere in the middle where it's not an amazing release, but it's not really bad either. So I think he comes in in the S tier. Um, I got to put Anthony Edwards A tier. I struggle to put him over. He is right on that borderline. But I'm going to be honest. I think you could put him in the S tier. And you know what? Screw it. I'm putting him in the S tier for now anyway. That may wind up getting adjusted down to A, but he is right at that borderline of S and A. A very smooth release elite slasher who is also a very capable defender with solid dribble six. A really good all-around card. Not the defender of Iggy, but he's a better playmaker and has a slightly faster release than Iggy does. I would still take Iggy over Ant, but I do think Ant is a really, really good card and does deserve a spot pretty high on the list. Bradley Beal, good playmaker, solid sigs, really good shooter, very poor defender, undersized to the three. He's a very good offensive card though, outside of his height though. And I do think he does deserve a spot in the C tier. Uh, Bruce Bowen is also, nah, we'll put Bruce Bowen C tier, high C tier. He's a three and D guy, elite shooter with a solid release and a very good de defender, especially on the perimeter, but not elite overall as a card. So I think C tier is probably pretty fair. Clyde Drexler is S tier, I think pretty easily. Again, uh, I mean, obviously the Opals are going to be S tier. They're exceptional cards. They have 15 Hall of Fame badges, elite stats all the way around. Clyde, not an exceptional, like dominant defender, but a very solid defender. Uh, and then an elite slasher with a good release as as well. Clyde is a really, really good card. Probably the second best shooting guard in the game right now. Uh, Danny Green, same thing. Probably going to go C tier again with him. I may wind up adjusting this list out slightly at some point, but for now, we're going to put Danny and Bruce in C tier. They do the exact same thing. They're both 3 and D guys who really don't do a lot else on the court besides playing D and shooting threes, but they're very good at both of those things. Dominique, capable release, not an elite release, really good slasher, not an elite defender, but not a bad defender. He's really good at six foot seven in terms of his length. One of the best slashing shooting guards in the game, though, and slashing is crucial. He could knock down the three and play some defense as well, and I think he's a very solid option at B tier. J.R. Smith, also going to go B tier, elite offensive shooting guard. He's got a bad size up, but the rest of his sigs are solid, and he's got an elite release for a shooting guard. Not a horrible defender, but not a particularly great one either. I think B tier is pretty fair for for J.R. Smith right there with guy like Ben Matherin. Uh, Jalen Green, pretty mid-release, uh, not a very great defender. Um, he is a very good slasher, but his release is not elite. He is better than a guy like Shaden Sharp, though, uh, so I think he does deserve his spot in the C tier. Jalen Brown's going to be our first A tier. Um... I mean, Jalen Brown is very, very good. He's complete. He can handle the ball. He can slash. He can defend. He can shoot. His release is just slow. That's the reason he's not in S tier is because his release is really slow. That's the main reason and really the only reason he's not in that S tier, but I still think he's a really good card. Jimmy Butler's the best shooting guard in the game, in my personal opinion. Maybe the best on-ball defender in the game right now. Also has normal fade, a really elite jump shot, even though it looks really weird. It's smooth, fast. I really like it a lot, even though it looks super weird with him leaning back, and he's a capable slasher as well. Not the greatest playmaker in the world, but he's so elite as a defender, and even with that normal fade, helps out 
about his playmaking, that he is definitely S tier and uh, probably the best shooting guard in the game right now. Joe Johnson, very, very solid card. Normal Fade is great, a decent release, a capable defender. I don't think he's as good as any of the S tier guys, but I think he's really, really solid for sure. I might even take him over Jalen Brown. I think he's really, really solid, just not quite top five at the position, in my opinion. So it's hard for me to put him higher than A tier. John Havlicek is, I mean, he's mid. I know he was a free pink dime at the very beginning of the game, but looking at the card, he's just not that good. His playmaking badges are not amazing, and he really does not play make all that well in the first place. Defensive is like not great, but it's not horrible. Not an elite slasher. He's slow. Um, release is mediocre, and his movement sucks. Like he, he's mid. I mean, C tier might even be. He's probably C tier because his release is pretty good, but overall, he's not a great card. Jordan Poole is one of the worst trophy case cards uh, at the shooting guard position, in my opinion. I really do not like this card much at all. Uh, his release, I, you know what? I'm moving Jalen Green down to D tier. I'm moving uh, Brad. No, we're leaving Brad Beal in C tier. Uh, but Jalen Green's release is kind of mid. I think Jordan Poole deserves to be in the C tier. I'm going to be completely honest. He's not a smooth card. His release is not good. He's not an elite defensive card. Uh, he's just not an elite card all the way around. And putting a trophy case card all the way down in C tier is, is a little crazy, but I just don't think he's very good. Uh, Chris Middleton, an easy A tier, I will say that. Uh, very similar to Joe Johnson. They both have normal fade, are capable defenders. Chris, a little bit better defender. Joe's release is a little bit better. Neither of them quite to that elite S tier level, but both very, very good cards, deserving of an A tier spot. Kyle Korver, one of the best, if not the best shooters, pure shooters in the game right now, can defend a little bit, can dunk a little bit. Not an elite athlete, but he is still a very, very good card with a very good release. And another A tier level shooting guard. Uh, Latrell Sprewell, another A-tier guy, kind of like Jalen Brown, very, very good all the way around, not a super elite release, he's not quite as complete as Jalen Brown, but I think they say his release is a little bit better, but I'd say him and Jalen Brown are very similar, just like Chris Middleton and Joe Johnson are very similar, and they both deserve to be in the A-tier. Luke is an easy D-tier, one of the worst cards on this list, this Luka card is horrible, he's my favorite player in the league, but this card stinks, and it's unfortunate to say that because I wish he was good, but he's just not right now. Uh, Manu is B-tier, I don't think Manu's very good either, uh, I don't think he's like horrendous, but... Um, he's got good speed. He's a good shooter. He's just a mediocre dunker and a very mediocre all-around defender. You could add some defensive badges to him that will help him out, but he has none as a base card, which is annoying. Um, can shoot the three decently, but his release is not elite. Uh, movement is okay, but not exceptional either. He's solid, uh, just not an elite enough defender to be higher than the B tier for me personally. Uh, MJ is a pretty, yeah, he's def I would say MJ is S tier. I think he is a top five shooting guard in the game. Really elite defender, elite slasher as well. Um, doesn't have incredible playmaking. His release is a little bit slow. I think he's similar to Iggy in a lot of ways. Uh, I just think Iggy's release is a little bit better, and I like Iggy's player build a little more. I think it helps him out on the interior, but I do think MJ is a really good card and does deserve to be in the S tier. Mitch Richmond is, I think, D tier. This card, he shoots the three and does nothing else um and that's just not enough for me at this point to use you um richard hamilton is better than kyle corver another elite shooter i'm moving kyle corver down to the b tier because all he does is shoot he does it at exceptional level but everything else is mediocre and i think richard hamilton is better than a guy like kyle corver so i will move richard hamilton into the a tier a very good shooter um and a capable all-around playmaker and defender not insane but not bad um yeah he's a solid solid card richard Re richard jefferson is incredible this card on paper is one of the best couple shooting guards in the game his release just sucks because he does everything else at a super high level super fast really good all-around defender great shooter great dunker badges are super solid release is just very very poor on richard jefferson so for me it's very hard to put him higher than the a tier despite the fact that on paper the card is insane uh, so that's about where he's going to go right now victor oladipo is going to go in the c tier as well kind of like uh i mean he's not super budget but i think he's a solid card uh he's He's, he's not bad. He's just not amazing. Uh, has a solid enough release, a decent shooting ability. He just doesn't have great size, uh, doesn't have incredible sigs, doesn't have incredible badges. Like He's a good card. I just don't think he's a truly great card at this point in the game. Vince Carter, amazing offensively, really good release. One of the best shooting guards in A tier for sure. Deserves to be at the top of the list. He just isn't an elite enough defender to be an S tier shooting guard, in my opinion. But I do still think he's an exceptional card at that position. Uh, Wally Zerbiak, probably the best card in the B tier. Uh, does not do a ton outside of shooting the ball, but he shoots at an elite level with an amazing release just a mediocre defender mediocre slasher mediocre athleticism but he is so incredible as a knockdown shooter that it's almost impossible to put him lower than the b tier and in fact i would say you could argue for him a tier despite the fact that he's not incredible outside of being a shooter and then the last card on this list is zach levine who is an elite offensive card doesn't play a ton of defense i'm moving beal down to the d tier also because i don't think beal does much outside it i lied beal moves better and shoots better than john havlicek havlicek is moving down to the d tier instead uh but zach levine doesn't play much defense whatsoever but is an elite offensive 
offensive card and was very fun to use when I had the card. So this is going to be my tier list of the best shooting guards in NBA 2K23, my team right now. Let me know what you think of the list down in the comment section down below, who, may be, who I may be ranked too high, too low, or left off the list entirely that you'd like to hear my opinion on. But uh, hopefully y'all did enjoy the video. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon. And I appreciate y'all. Peace.